Hello, my name is Daryl Robert Schoon, and once again, I have the honor, and you have the gift, of listening to Reverend Betty Tadaleski here in Tucson, Tucson, Arizona, and she is the founder of the Temple of Universality. But um, I, I tell you, I've been around this planet a couple of times. I've been to Machu Picchu. I've been on the Great Wall of China. I've I've traveled all over the place, and I have to say that this is one of the wonders of the world. Thank you. Well, Arizona is one of the wonders of the world. Mm. Arizona, you know, we are so fortunate. And I've lived in different places around the world also, but Arizona is my mm -hmm. gift. And the people here, the Aquarians here, now, we've been celebrating the 100th birthday of Arizona, and that um, February 12th, 1912. And um, so it's coming to an end, but not without a lot of celebration. The people here in Tucson and Pima County really have this Aquarian heart. They may not have all been born in February, like you were, but we just have this Aquarian heart. Now, I, you know, one time Spirit gave me a, lo a lengthy message about where are the hippies. <laughs> and uh, so, we all become hippies at some point in time as politics, um, you know, f focuses on so many negative things. And, and I have this thought, and where are the hippies? And um, so a lot of them are here. A lot of us who never got to be hippies, but we're raising them. <laughs> <laughs> and I've become more hippified than my, than my kids who were out there doing it. But anyway, the age of Aquarius is here in this Aquarian state. And um, just a couple of weeks ago, we were at Reed Park celebrating. And I read something from one of the beautiful Native Americans. Uh, and I'd like to share it again with the folks, and if you'd like a copy of it, just notice our address on here, and I would be happy to send it to you. But it's about um, Arizona's al uh, alchemist, uh, the people who have joined the AAA, the um, Aquarian, Arizona's Aquarian alchemist, the AAA. You're one, if you live here. And if you don't live here, you probably wish you did. For a hundred and fifty years, your organized approach to God has dominated this great nation and the world. And man has forgotten himself in the midst of all this programming and conformity to walk blind as the blind leads the blind. But a spiritual revolution is taking place, and try as man will, he cannot dissuade the force of power that has come upon him, ushering in the new age, bringing back to man that which he has forsaken, and displaying before him the wonders of the great spirit. This is a new time for crusades, a new time that the door may be opened, that the light may shine. A new time when multitudes are turning away from that which they had thought they held, but discovered they were nothing but dry bones. It's a joyous time, for the spirit is heavy upon the earth, and the direction of the spirit leads man into a greater fulfillment, and his willingness and his awareness. That fulfillment is more easily brought within his grasp. This revolution does not exist only in this place, but in all cities and all countries of the world, for the communion of the Spirit waxes strong and reaches out to multitudes of people. Perhaps you shall see, even in the time of your embodiment, 
what the revolution of the spirit can bring to a changing world whose cycle of ignorance is almost at the end. Therefore, be prepared for which is at hand and rise up and walk with dignity among your fellow men and share with them the feast of the table of truth as much as they can devour. And be not afraid that you are the messenger, the voice of the great spirit. The time is now. Those of you who achieve the goal of many years, you shall see unfoldment of heaven upon the earth. Shun those prophets of doom, the end of the world, or great wars, for all lies at peace upon the earth and only the children are fighting. The mature and understanding are growing into the reflection of the understanding as compassion and love is born within their hearts. Um, man shall turn from the materialism and shall step aside from his aggr aggressive desire to rule the world. And peace and wisdom and a new cycle begins. Um, and we call it Aquarius. Who knew? Betty, where did that come from? This came from uh, that beautiful Indian crowfoot. Crowfoot? Crowfoot. It's stunning. 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 And so, so, so timely. Oh, Betty. So I, timely. Yeah. When you had your restaurant there at, in San Francisco. Berkeley. And, and, and Berkeley. <laughs> and uh, all of the friends were chanting, yeah. make, make love, not war. Yeah. And the power of a flower. You ah. know? And and who knew, who knew that you and I would be sitting, sitting here, here together yeah. in this Aquarian state yep. to celebrating the birth of Aquarius yep. and and uh, the alchemist, uh, the alchemist, because things are changing for the good. You know, <clears throat> I mean, Betty, I was there you in the there. 1960s. I mean, much to the chagrin of my parents, well, of course. <laughs> I was there. I had dropped out of law school. 1966 in San Francisco at Hastings, and I w ended up running the food concessions <clears throat> at the Avalon Ballroom. And the Avalon Ballroom was really the home, the spiritual home of the hippies, all right? It was run by a commune from San Francisco um, that had come up from Texas called the Family Dog, oh, all right? Okay. And the logo of the Family Dog was an old Indian with a stovepipe hat, and it said underneath him, Maybe the, may the baby Jesus open your mind and shut your mouth. Isn't that lovely? All right. Well, that's what he tried to do. Yes, that's what. That's what he was here for. That's what the that, that's what the saying was in, in, in at the at the Avalon Ballroom, and uh, you know, I mean, I didn't quite believe it myself. All right. No, but it was your world. It was it was our world. We lived in it. The music, the the talk of the Aquarian age. The the, the peace, I mean, there was, nobody cared about money there. We would like to have a resurgence oh. of that music. Oh, it was so, you know. yeah, it was so, the, the, there was an opening there. But I, I, I think Jerry Garcia said it so well, Betty, you know, from the Grateful Dead. He said there was a window that was open for a short period yes. and then it shut. Yes. Now, I yes. didn't, we didn't know where it went. We had no idea where it came from. But sitting next to you here in Tucson in 2012, I believe in a way that I didn't then, that the world, that the age of Aquarius was in fact coming, and now I believe it is here. It is here, and uh, you know, as we celebrate this mm. birthday, and it will mean more to people, the birth of mm -hmm. Arizona than it has mm -hmm. in the past because it is definitely, definitely here. Um, I would like for you to read something for me, mm -hmm. another channeling from the Ascended Masters of Light. These are under the direction <laughs> of St. Germain, uh, who is the director of the Temple of Universality. And, and I just love their words. It comes with such a beautiful spirit. There's two pages of this, isn't there, Betty? Isn't there a... Uh, no, I think that's it oh, on okay. that one. This, mm -hmm. I love this. I truly I do too. love and this we one. we hope everybody does because we want to give it to you. Right. <clears throat> Science will be shaken 
philosophies changed, and religionists will be aghast. Inclusiveness is the word of the day. The walls of separation will be broken down. Like the Berlin Wall, they will crumble. Move from your isolated tower of separation that has been created by your ego into the broader spectrum of unity. All paths lead to the one, to the light. Look beyond your former limited vision. Remember, you are as great as you can imagine. We repeat, you are as great as you can imagine. Ponder on these words and break down your self-imposed restrictions. Bring forth the gifts that you have brought to earth, light bearers. Remove the candle from under the basket and shine into a darkened world. Do not continue to marvel at the abilities of others, for each of you is a great soul. Many in spirit march with you in your endeavors. The freedom march is gaining momentum. Many are seeking a way out of their self-imposed selves of frustration and anguish. Divine discontent is moving through the collective soul of mankind. Be prepared to step out of the shadows, dear friends, as the activation of Aquarius begins. Your present mold is old, dear friends. Please replace and destroy it. It confines you to a little world. The inner lamp must be lit. You are the light. Ignite the wick. Be conscious of your words. The flame of will within each word will raise and heal the sick. Astound yourself. Amaze the world with your power and determination. For you are here to demonstrate your power of co-creation. Wow. So true. So true. So true. So true. And as <clears throat> Spirit has said so many times, we would not have you ignorant. Ignorance is nothing to be proud of. And as Spirit has said so many times, it is, it's not a sin, but it certainly doesn't serve you well to be ignorant. Be ignorant no longer. Now, that, that, what I want to say is that message that I just read was one of a series that was given to you, Betty, yeah. in, uh, what is it, 80? In 95. In 95. And she was traveling in the Middle East. It was before the doors to the Temple of Universality opened. Right, right before, yeah. okay, that yeah. you were going to begin yes. this, these were the, the, the church. masters. Yes. And as you traveled throughout the Middle East, right. all right, you began receiving channel messages that every you day, every wrote day. down. And this every is day. one of them. This is one of and them. And they came from the Ascended Masters. Yes. All right? And, and all, you know, Betty, you, you know, when I read those words, I, I read them and I hoped they were, I thought... They, I, have a, they have a beautiful spirit. They have a beautiful spirit to it. All right? But there's a difference between now and then. Yes. I believe those words now. Yes. And I didn't necessarily believe them when I first heard them. They sounded like a little, you know... Far a little far-fetched. Not timely. Yes. And, no. and, 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 you know, we, we're coming into, you know, like this, this, we're out of the holiday season. Yes. 2012 is over. All right. And it's the end on December 21st. It was the end of the 5,125 year Mayan long count cycle. Right. Calendar. Now. Yeah, that cycle. That cycle. It ended. Now. For those who didn't know, it was like finding a book and they go, oh, the, la there's no, the, the book's all, the, it's over because this, pay, this book we, is we over. We love to jump to oh, conclusions. Totally so. jump to conclusions. And what the Mayans said, it was the end of a major cycle and, and the beginning of another. And I believe in my heart, Betty. Absolutely. It coincides with the opening, the dawning, the real dawning of the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius as a concept in our consciousness happened in the 1960s when I was in San Francisco. That's right. I was a part of it. That's right. I was there. Um, words like peace, joy, um, smile on your brother, right. you know, let your love light shine. I mean, that's what was going on. 
Right. And that was and 50 encore, years ago. An encore to Aquarius. And, uh, yes. And, and now, 50 years later, it's here. that door has swung open, Betty. It's here. And universalism is the Pentecost. There are, you know, as I've said before, I always, from the Bible, I always wanted to experience Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have, mm -hmm. and each Sunday mm -hmm. uh, at the temple we experience Pentecost uh, because there are people there from different countries and different religions mm -hmm. and spirit there from uh, all levels of and um, higher levels of the heaven worlds as we call it, and so it is a holy communion, uh, just breathing together with these people of divergent. Uh, backgrounds, um, cultures, and so forth. But we are, we are blessed. We are so blessed. Uh, I want to say something about the Temple of Universality. Betty received these transmissions in 1995, shortly before the doors, before the Temple of Universality came into actual being, okay? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> in 1989, that was when you first heard of this. 79. Oh, in 79. That's right. In 79. 79. They told me I would do it. You would do it. <laughs> now, here you were. You were working in public relations in Tucson. Yes. <laughs> and you, you, you had heard about a little spiritualist church where people talk to people in spirit or dead people. As Actually, I was invited. And, and, and it, had they told me that, I wouldn't have believed it. Okay. I would, I would, I would not have gone because I wouldn't have, would have believed, believed it. it. Yes. No. So what did you they just think? Invited oh, they me. invited you to come. All right. Now, oh. what I want to know is, when you walked into this church, just over the door. Okay. Standing in the door. Yes. On one step. Yes. I fell into paradise. Okay. I fell into paradise. All right. I had never experienced paradise before, and I certainly had experienced a lot of churches. You yes. Know, I was raised Southern Baptist. Yeah. I was a Catholic for many years. Yeah. Love Catholicism. Yeah. But the thing I love about uh, working with spirit is that uh, before you you were on your knees and and you know and and giving thanks uh, and praying. But what I loved is um, what spirit says: "Be still and know the I am God within you, and let us talk to you. Let us talk to you. You've chanted to us enough. Be still and know the I am God, and we will talk through to that." And then to find out that there were people, uh, small groups of people around the world, but especially here in Tucson, in Tucson yeah. we had four or five spiritualist churches of which I had never heard. You know, so this was a, a really a new birth for me and my family, all, all of them. That's, that's the thing I'd like to add to, is that here you were in Tucson, you stumbled into this, apparently stumbled. Well, I just called yes. it, I fell into it. You yes, know? this little spiritualist church. I just remember very well, you know, just opening the door and walking in. It looked like a Catholic church, okay. actually, with, right. you know, very beautiful, the man in robes and all. And, uh, and it was like I was on another planet. Mm. But I was also frustrated and a little angry because how could I be, you know, grown up, traveled the world, many, many countries, and here in my own backyard was this beautiful gift. communication gift yeah. to the world where there are no boundaries yeah. uh, and uh, heaven was open to me. Wouldn't I have been rather stupid not to <laughs> try to get connected with it? You know? <laughs> Betty. <laughs> From personal experience, I would say that humanity has the most difficulty with change, yeah. all right? Mm -hmm. And the changing of, of what we consider an understanding <clears throat> of reality mm -hmm. is the biggest of all, all right? It is. Oh, oh, it's, it's not a, you know, one of the channelings, it's, a mis it's a, not a mystery uh, about your birth. You know, you came to earth to with a purpose and nobody came without one, you know. Well, who knew about a purpose? You know, all I knew was that you were born in sin and you were going to hell unless you did some 
some things like go to church every Sunday and put money in. You know, that's why we. You weren't supposed take. to. You weren't even supposed to see. Supposed to see a movie on Sunday. No, Isn't that Saturday's right? Saturday's okay, but Sunday. Sunday yeah. You're hell, bound for hell. <laughs> now my friends, you know, uh, I had friends who. Couldn't dance at all. Yeah. No fingernail polish. Yeah. No, all of this would yeah. send you to hell. Hell, yeah. And we, you know, the only mystery about this um, Aquarian age to me is how did it remain a secret so long when the beautiful Messiah Jesus and the Buddha and Mohammed and all of these who were really channeling from the spirit world. Now, as soon as they, they said it, a lot of people started writing, and since they didn't believe it, it all changed. And there was enough change there, but then when the preachers got a hold of it and said, well, you know, I know it's got to be harder than this because, I mean, why would people still keep coming to church if they're not... Um, you know, going to hell if they don't. So let's lay this on them. And then it became the accepted word of what the great masters have said about gentility and humility and becoming tranquil into a world of tranquility. Well, and it's all an inside job and nobody else is responsible for it but you. You know, Betty... I want to return to this thing about Tucson and that little church you walked into. Oh, and you said at the time Trinity. there were four spiritualist churches in Tucson. There were, yes. Okay, yes. now, I I have re only recently, my grandparents were born here. I mean, and my, no, my, my parents were born here, all right? And, and uh, but I spent all my time not, not in Tucson until around the year 2000 when Martha and I showed up here. And I can only say that that I believe that this little town, that this church that you walked into, and the spiritual energy in Tucson, is like no other, almost no other place it's on a the nucleus. planet. Yes, it's at, a at nucleus this, yes. of the Aquarian age, age for this country. Yes, it definitely is because they're uh, uh, united. Um, the Church of Mankind has been here for well over forty years, while you were in. Uh, in San, San Francisco, Francisco, yeah, it was here. So these churches have been here a long, a long time. Yeah, the the the, the you know what I want to say is is that you know Betty, our paths crossed at uh, um, at a very important time, and Betty had been down here absolutely, her, absolutely working. Um, and I recognized you. Uh, yeah, that was kind of and you and Martha. And, and, yeah, you and Martha. Yeah, yeah, we. It was destined that 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 we be, we come back to Tucson. It was destined that we found you. It was destined that you introduced us to this reality that was in my in my mind, Betty, was sort of off to the side. Well, I'd never heard of it. Yes. You know, I mean, you were smarter than I. You uh, know, you had pondered on that. Yeah. When I walked in, I had not. Yeah, but you know, I, but you prepared in a sense that you prepared the way. For, for us to love, come back here. I love the people to be delighted. Oh, Betty, and, I didn't you know, expect heart, this. You know, when you get that delight in your heart and uh, the um, uh, <laughs> DDT time is over because everybody has DDT time, divine discontent time, the world is proof of it right now. People killing each other, tearing up their homes divine discontent that they don't understand. Yep. You must move into your yes. heart and give something yes. to the world. Yeah. The folks, the Temple of Universality here in Tucson is a center of spirituality, of love and heart. Dogma doesn't matter. Ideology is a thing of the past. We listen to spirit. We listen to each other. Join us at the Temple of Universality every Sunday at 11 a.m. at the corner of Prince and Country Club at the Masonic Temple here in Tucson. Because you're an Aquarian. That's how you got here.